From the Clark Ford Studio in Oxford, Mississippi, MBW Digital proudly presents the Oxford Exxon Podcast. I'd say thanks for tuning in, but why am I going to give you a round of applause for something you're supposed to do, to be frank? And now, here are your hosts, Chase Parm. And broadcast school has really paid off. And Neil McCrady. I deserve to be on TV. Friday edition of the Oxford Exxon podcast. Chase Parham, Neil McCready, Clark Ford Studio this morning. Go through some Fire Away Friday. I'll talk a little uh, Ole Miss basketball and baseball. The baseball team playing UAB uh, at some point this weekend. We'll see there what the go. weather does. But 3 p.m. is the scheduled first pitch today. Uh, tomorrow we might need that canoe that I got in trouble about a couple years ago. And then uh, on Sunday, it's somewhere around one thirty, I believe, for the uh, thing. But I got a feeling we might play two sevens on uh, on Sunday. So I give you uh, a coin toss today. All right, that's fair. I like that. I'm going to at least show up at the stadium today. There's no doubt I'll be at the park today. My guess is that you could skip tomorrow, and there would be no harm. That lo- I could probably schedule some stuff tomorrow, and it'd be all right. It looks like a soaker, and then Sunday, I think you're probably getting a full day at the ballpark. That, that's my guess. Today is a coin toss. A lot of Ron Polk on Sunday. Yeah. You get to watch him see if he falls asleep in the bullpen. Uh, yeah. Does that from time to time. Yeah. I just I just think I just think today's flipping a coin. Maybe. Because there's the forecast is for thunderstorms. And so sometimes as I mean listen, I'm not telling anybody. If you live down here, you know. Uh sometimes those things pop up and sometimes they don't. And sometimes they pop up and turn into a soaker. Essentially what the uh, the forecast is telling us is all the conditions are ripe for those to pop up, and we'll see if they pop up or not. Well, I mean, you can walk outside and tell it's going to rain. I think there's a 0% chance of no rain today. I yeah. just don't know when it's going to rain and how it's going to rain and what they're going to do. And My little app thing says dry but high chance of rain this afternoon, and by high chance it's like 75 to 100%. Yeah. So they might get it in. They but the not. radar is currently clear. Mm-hmm. So. But just the conditions are, yeah. you can tell that there's a lot of moisture in the air. So if you head over to the ballpark and you uh, it does get rained out, stop at Blue Sky Oxford Exxon on the way out of town, pick up some ribs, or way in town, I guess. You can just stop on by. Wet or dry, call ahead or pick up there. Also, if you're in there earlier today, you know you can get a lunch special for four ninety nine. Brunswick Stew is that. Two sides of bread, 32-ounce drink. Or if you got a stadium cut from the Pavilion, from Swayze Field, wherever you get it from, refill that bad boy for 49 cents every single time at Blue Sky and the Oxford Exxon. And again, coming to you from the Clark Ford studio. We are. Clark Ford is in Amory, Mississippi, 662-257-1900 is the number. Ask for our friend Corey Clark and then request a quote on a vehicle you're interested in, a couple of vehicles you're interested in. Um, we tell you this all the time. If you're in the market for a vehicle, do yourself a favor. Do us a favor, frankly. Um, at least get a quote from Corey. You never know where it's going to lead. It might end up helping you uh, in your purchase of a different vehicle. At least you're going to know. Because what you're going to know with Corey is it's right to the bottom line. No hassle. No haggle. None of that BS that takes all freaking day buying a car. It's, uh, frankly, a new school approach to uh to doing it it's efficient for him and therefore it is efficient for you as well so uh get your quote and if you end up doing what i've done now several times and that's going back to clark ford and uh getting the vehicle that you uh you like at the end of your deal tell Corey that you heard about it on our podcast you mentioned any of our family of podcasts it's been a busy podcast week mention any of them and uh you'll save 500 dollars off the already great bottom line of clark ford and amory again that number is 662 662- Two five seven one nine zero zero. We'll be releasing a beer garden presented by the Oxford Crystal here in a, a bit, or actually by the time you hear this here podcast, Neil, a uh, a good bit of good bit of Ole Miss draft talk last night. Yeah, I think I did thirty five minutes with John Ledyard of uh, NFL Draft Network. It's he's part of the Locked On Network. They have, they, have a, they do a daily draft podcast. Can you imagine? That's a lot of draft. A daily draft podcast. Um, man, he to say he knows his stuff is that's an understatement. Uh, he really good. We did it taped it last night at ten o'clock. I was you probably were sound asleep. Close, close. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
I had Blazers and Thunder on, which turned out to be a phenomenal NBA game. But anyway, uh, we talked um, about 25 minutes of Ole Miss draft. It's big. It's going to be a big draft for Ole Miss. He uh, he has a pretty interesting projection for DK Metcalf. We talked about A.J. Brown. We talked about Dawson Knox. We talked about Greg Little. We talked about Jordan Tamu. He's higher on Jordan Tamu than a lot of people are. Uh, likes him in, in, in certain fits in the uh, in the association or in the NFL. Um, and then uh, we talked about Zedrick Woods, Ken Webster, uh, Javon Patterson. We talked a lot of stuff. And then after that was over, it was about 25 minutes. We did another 10 minutes or so on the overall draft, uh, Kyler Murray, Drew Locke, stuff, draft stuff. And so uh, if you like Ole Miss football, uh, you'll like this beer garden. If you like the NFL draft, you'll like this beer garden. And if you like Ole Miss football and the NFL draft, you'll love this beer garden. It's nothing but uh, John Ledyard, a lot of NFL talk. So we'll have that uh, for you this morning, and we would appreciate the uh, the download. You'll, If you like the draft and you want to hear a lot of Ole Miss draft talk, it's, it's, it's one that's absolutely for you. Also up on the site, we have uh, at rebelgrove.com, we got video from Tyrone Nix, Calvin McGee, new uh, new Ole Miss coaches, old Ole Miss coach with uh, Tyrone. So that up at rebelgrove.com as well. So just kind of uh, rehashing a little bit of the content. Also, my baseball mailbag uh, went up this morning, got questions about the rotation, about why Ole Miss has struggled, struggled against soft-tossing lefties over the years, a little bit of everything there in the uh, the mailbag. So that is your coverage at rebelgrove.com. I'll have a Ole Miss-Missouri preview up at some point today. Uh, there's a greatest pod in the South that is loaded. I just got to put it up on the site. If you subscribe on iTunes, it's there for you. Um, episode 50 of Greatest Pod in the South. The pre-show to Greatest Pod in the South, which was streaming on YouTube and such, might have been the best we've ever done because both Jay and I were singing Michael McDonald songs. You do pre-shows? Oh, pre-shows? We kind of did a pre-show yesterday. Is it a kind of a warm-up thing, or are you actually discussing topics? Uh, a little bit of everything. Are you kind of just getting in the in the mode, or what? I don't even what remember we? what we talked about. We were just talking, and something came up, and we started singing a Michael McDonald song. Which one? I don't remember. Isn't that terrible? Your memory is starting to fade a touch, just a just well, a little bit. It is, and on a week like this week, where there's been, it's just been go 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 go. I, I can't I can't remember certain things. Okay, like I'm pro, I, I, maybe I'm doing the right thing and just remembering the important things. Fo- so, so throwing the, throwing the unimportant things out. Okay, I had a busy day yesterday. Did you? I did. Uh, so, all right, well, uh, I don't really have anything about baseball today per se. Um, Ole Miss is going with the same rotation, Etheridge, Phillips, uh, Hoagland this weekend. UAB actually, uh, pretty good and pitched the crap out of it. I was looking at their, their ERAs of their starters and all, of, I think the highest ERA they had of their three starters was 2.03. So, who have they played? Not much of anybody on the weekend. Okay. Yeah. They have the two midweek games, which they've also pitched well. It's a 4-3 loss to Alabama and a 3-2 loss to Mississippi State. So, they, they've done a good job. But I just happened to notice those uh, those ERAs of their, their main guys. Here's a stat for you if you want to watch it a little bit. And I don't know. I need to look. This is kind of bad uh, bad reporting on my part um, because I don't know if they're left or right-handed. I'll look in a second. But um, Ole Miss so far this season against left-handed pitching, sample size is not huge. That's, that's obvious. But – let me say that so far their slash line against left-handed pitching as a team, 188, 270, 330. Oof. What is the sample size? How many innings? Uh, not a ton. I mean, probably 45, 50 innings. But, I mean, that's getting up there a little bit. Oof. Oof. Yeah, 188, 270, 330 so far. Got to fix that. Or you're going to start seeing some southpaws, man. As I wrote right after that, that's not going to cut it. No. <laughs> so Not even close. Means they're hammering right-handers. But well, it means teams are going to start stacking left-handers. And they did get no hit for eight and two-thirds yesterday. Yeah, that, that that hurt the slash line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was eight innings of, of whatever. But nonetheless, that is the, uh, the number as of right that's now. Certainly something to watch. And then uh, the second question, another thing, just kind of watch. You know, Ole Miss signed Bryce Blom a few years ago. 
Um, I thought he was going to be a multi-year starter at second base. He is currently starting in the Aggies infield at Texas A&M, and he is uh, leading them with a uh, 321 average and 933 OPS as of this moment. So, wow. Uh, yeah, he's playing well for uh, for Texas A&M. So, anyway, just a couple things there. Again, basketball, uh, Missouri at whatever time tomorrow. 2.30 tomorrow at Mizzou Arena. Uh, Gabe DeArmond and Mitchell Forty are going to be covering that for us. I will be watching. I'll have ten observations. We'll have video. Um, it'll almost be like we were there, except I'm not going. Okay. If anybody who wants to know why I'm not going, two reasons. One, my daughter Caroline turns 16 next week, and we are having her 16th birthday party tonight a bunch of her friends at the graduate so i couldn't go tonight because i certainly don't want to miss that and then um, secondly if you believe all of the bracketologist people they're in no matter what i'm going to nashville next week and if they're in no matter what um here's how people people love this inside stuff so here we go if Ole miss wins tomorrow you all will watch the video. You'll read the stuff. If Ole Miss loses tomorrow, you all will not watch the video. You will not read as much of the stuff, and it becomes a wasted trip, frankly, because you don't get much bang for your buck. And then secondly, I'd have to turn around on Sunday and drive six and a half, seven hours back from Columbia. I'm going to Nashville on Tuesday. And if you believe the Jerry Palms and Joe Lenardi's of the world, I'm going someplace uh, a week from Tuesday at the latest to cover the NCAA tournament. So at some point, you just have to say prioritize expenses here. It's fair. Because some of the did you know we're only like eight hours from Des Moines? I mean. I don't know. I drove through Iowa on the way to Omaha, but I don't really recall how what was what. Like eight hours is all we are from Des Moines. Okay. It's one of the places that Ole Miss could go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of places are drivable. Columbia, Jacksonville. Tulsa. Tulsa, certainly, drivable. Um, and then there are Hartford, San Jose, and Salt Lake. San Jose is the one where you're like, oh, so do we hire a stringer? Because where do you fly into? San Jose. Oh, do you? Okay. Yeah. But I, I would guess that a flight to San Jose without the seven-day notice is $1,000. Fair. I can look that up for you in a minute if you'd like me to. I would think Hartford would not be quite as much. For whatever reason, flying west always seems more expensive. Yeah. All right, jump into some questions. Uh, these coming uh, courtesy of one Avery Forbes. She wanted the uh, thread up last night. We obliged because, frankly, we didn't have much for an hour and 20 minutes to talk about. And so. we like Avery. Yeah, so it all works. It's all go. good. People people helping people. So yep. um says uh you do the dishes every night. Yes I do, as I said yesterday. I uh I handle the dishwasher exclusively. Um I do not I'm not real great at putting the clothes up, but I do almost all the laundry and all the dishes. Those are the two things that that I will do every day. I unload the dishwasher every morning. Uh huh. It's one of my jobs. And I uh I consider myself a laundry stud. You do a lot of laundry. I noticed that. I'd probably do 90 to 95% of the family laundry, including the folding. My deal with folding is very simple. It's this. If you let me go be on my own and fold, don't come talk to me. Don't bother me. Isn't, isn't folding redundant in that sentence? Don't you really just want to be left alone and don't bother me in any activity you're doing? Not any. But when I'm doing that, just let me let, – I'll turn on a podcast – and I'll go fold, and I'm good. It kind of it, it. I don't. It doesn't bother me. But if you're gonna come in there and talk to me and tell me that I'm not doing it right and stuff like that, I'm, I'm gonna leave. I don't know where some of her things are hung up correctly, so I'll leave that to her own deal. Yeah. I, I'm not gonna know exactly where in the organization of the closet to put this and this and that. So I put the kids' stuff in a basket. Okay. And take it upstairs. And let them and put it down on the it. landing and say, figure it out. Okay. But it's folded neatly, and I'll do the best I can. I can separate Carson's stuff from the girls' stuff, but sometimes the girls' stuff all looks the same. And now they share clothes. Oh, now we're and in so a And so it's like just whatever. Y'all figure that out. Okay. Yeah, now there, there's a certain relaxation to 
hanging up a bunch of clothes while I've just got the golf channel or something on in front of me, and yeah. I'm just kind of watching it, sort of, and it is what it is. So it's fine. I find ironing relaxing if I'm, again, by myself. <laughs> I do all the ironing, 100%. Yeah, yeah. Um, I do, I do too. I, I like and ironing. That's that, I've said this. That I think that's a bit of a credit to my mother because she was incredibly OCD about ironing where she would iron your T-shirts. Like, she was, everything got ironed. I mean, there were... There were there were creases in my jeans growing up, like everything was ironed. So I I, I just came about it natural. And do you, do you still put? Do you still iron every everything? Do you iron your t shirts? Uh, no, because well, but they're, they're not cotton anymore. We wear dry fit almost That's exclusively true. now, That's a good so point. it's not like it was cotton back in the day. I probably don't own other than like some t shirts I'm keeping for for some stupid reason, sentimental purposes. I bet I don't have five cotton t shirts. Yeah, I. I the only ones I have really are, the, you know, I subscribe to that T-shirt company that's one of the... Your Thunder people. That sponsors yeah, one of yeah, the yeah. Thunder podcasts, so I get a T-shirt a month. Yeah. And I have those. Otherwise, everything's dry fit or workout stuff. Yeah. So, no, I mean, whatever. Yeah. Obviously, my jeans need nothing. I just throw those bad boys on. They're so, awesome. You know, it's all good. The Holland and Sherry, you might throw in the dryer real quick just to get some wrinkles out, but you got to be careful. Don't, don't, don't go crazy. Yeah, they don't... They don't need much heat. No, but you can iron them as long as you put a towel or something over them and just run it across to kind of get some of the, the the creases out if you don't fold them correctly when you took them off. Gotcha. Yeah. So uh, the more you know. Yes, I was still awake last night. I went to bed ten fifteen, ten twenty last yeah, night. So I, I, had, good. I, I had to. Work. I was awake when you called. Kara was putting Carly Ann down, so I was being quiet. Yeah. But I was awake. I, I knew you were awake. I could tell. I, 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 I would have. I would have gotten that correct. I knew that yeah. the baby was probably going down. I almost didn't call. Almost just said, "Screw it, I'll transcribe it." But it was one of those deals where it was the first time they've seen Tyrone in a while, and it's the first time they've seen McGee at all. And like you said, when we talked about it, that might be one of those videos that actually gets watched. I've got other. We talked to who did we talk to last night? Uh, Sonogo. Talk to Momo. Talk Cooley. to yeah. Talk to Octavius Cooley yeah. and uh, 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 Elijah Moore. Yes, sir. Um, frankly, I'm going to use those for ten weekend thoughts because there's no football practice. They they were going to practice today. They did not. Um, there's no football practice until the Tuesday after spring break. So you'll get some football content on Sunday, and that probably is going to be the end of your football content for about a week. Next question from uh, Mr. Sunglasses. I'm assuming this is directed at me. He says, I hear PXG clubs are overrated, but I'd love to be rich enough to find out. If you were a billionaire what and could be fitted for any brand club, what would it be? Well, the first part of that, I, I'm not good enough for PXGs because I'm not good enough to spend the money on PXGs. Um, if you were a billionaire, you could get good enough. the first part of it. He said they were okay. overrated. Okay. Um, I, I don't think I would be willing to buy PXGs unless I was – better than a five handicap i feel like that's the number for me where i'd go okay i'm pretty good here so let's 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 five handicap means that you shoot five over par that's roughly. a very very elementary way to put it okay yeah, yeah. It could, I, I could really complicate it for you but yeah that's it's not that, necessary that, that's kind of the gist i'm good um on the on the average slope rating yeah whatever yeah that's that's it's good yeah yeah, yeah. Gotcha. point being yeah if we're if we're going to play a game and I'm a 13 handicap or whatever, the five handicap would give me eight shots on the same course just gotcha. if you're out playing around. Gotcha. Fair enough? Okay. Gotcha. Good enough. Um, your handicap would have been higher than five that day. So My handicap would be he is really handicapped. Yes. The handicap would be the golf swing would yes. be the problem. So yes. I would have the handicap sticker on my bag. Unless you move the ball a ton or are pretty good, I, I, just, I, I can't go there unless you just got enough money where it just doesn't freaking matter and why not. The people that I know that use them are very, very happy with them, and I don't know this answer. I would assume that the reason you pick up some distance with those clubs is because the lofts are different than some other irons. So, you're, you know, the seven iron, yeah, it goes farther than the other guy's seven iron, but if the seven iron is three degrees less loft, well, yeah, it's going to go farther because of what the loft is. Um, if I'm a billionaire, I still want the clubs fitted that's going to make my game the best. I mean, whether it's the Hanmas that Rustin Rose is using now or Muriz or whatever, I still, I mean, I, I, I'm not ever going to be the guy that goes, "Hey, let me go, l let me get these four thousand dollar golf clubs simply because they're wet." If it's not the best club for my game, I'd much rather be better at golf. So, I mean, there are some times I've heard people get fitted and go, "Hey, I went in and I'm expecting the PXGs," and the fitter goes, "Hey, these Cerixons are what really fix 
if it's your game the best, and you're kind of like, okay, fine. You kind of gr- begrudgingly buy them anyway, but nonetheless, yeah, no, nah, I'm, 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 I'm good with whatever if you got the money. I mean, I know people that every two years are buying just whatever the latest best thing is, and that's that's what they spend their money on. But I'm, uh, I'm not good enough to partake in that at this point. So we'll, uh, we'll see. Uh, all right. Neil McCready, this is yours. Would you rather spend a three-day weekend at a hotel that has snakes, non-venomous though, slithering all over the property, including the rooms, or would you rather go a full year without any internet access of any kind? God. Both options suck. Don't you deal with snakes for three days? It's only three days. Non-venomous. Non-venomous. You will not die. You're in a room with a bunch of chicken snakes. And it never it never says the room's overtaken. There's just snakes around. But here's the problem. Oh. You're never going to sleep. Oh, no, 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 no. For three no, days. No, no. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm going to literally crawl up on top of something. <laughs> and wait 72 hours. And wait 72 hours. With a stick. Like, I'm going to urinate on myself, everything. I'm not, getting, I'm not going anywhere. You would go on top of the dresser and just wait 72 hours with a stick to hit anything that got anywhere near you. Yes. For 72 hours. Yes. And there better be lights on. Like, I would want to be fitted for some golf clubs because I'd be swinging those sons of bitches. If it had to be dark, you'd pick the internet. You wouldn't be in oh, a yeah, dark no, room no, no, for 72 I'd, I'd, hours. I'd go, because I, I, there would, I've talked to people who have given up social media, and they all say the same thing. If you can get through a month, you don't want it anymore. Look, it's an addiction like anything else. Yes. It is. Same yeah. principles apply. Yes. So, if you offered me, so yes, if darkness is involved, I'm out. How long could you last in a room with snakes if it was pitch black dark? Before I had a stroke? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, a minute. As soon as one touched you? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm petrified of Something it. Something starts crawling up? There's really nothing that scares me more. What is it about them? I don't know. I mean, I'm the same way. I mean, I've, I've told people this, and people that have the opposite fear, because most people are really scared of one or the other, think I'm nuts. Just seeing one would raise my blood pressure or whatever, although I could have ten spiders crawling all over me and wouldn't be that bugged out about it. Yeah, I'll whatever. see a spider, and I don't I don't lose it. I don't try to kill it. I'm no, good, no, whatever. no, I'm good. You mind your business, I'll mind mine. Yeah. Um, I see a snake, man. I'm, 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 I'm freaked out. Like, I don't sleep well that night. And y'all had some over here. Yeah. You've dealt with it. Yeah, I was at a football (laughs) practice once where the girls called screaming, there's a snake in the house, there's a snake in the house, and I came home. Did you? How'd you kill it? Um, How did I kill it? Used a stick of some sort. A stick? I mean, it was like a broomstick or something. Like beat it to death? Yeah. Okay. Hit it a lot, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Podcast brought to you in part by Community Mortgage, Oxford, Memphis, I killed County, it dead. and Chattanooga. One of the oldest mortgage companies in the Southeast. Our underwriting and processing is done in Memphis. They're getting local underwriting that understands your market. Ask Jason about the float down option, which allows you to lock in the current rate. But if rates go down before you close, you just get the lower rate. 662-234-2704 or JLO, J-L-O-W-E at communitymtg.com. Guest, uh, join us on the Patterson and Earhart hotline. In fact, uh, John Ledyard. Join me last night on the Patterson and Earhart Hotline. You can listen to that on the Beer Garden, presented by Oxford Crystal. Patterson and Earhart, attorneys at law, specialize in personal injury law and real estate law, but theirs is a general practice that can handle any of your legal needs. When you contact Patterson and Earhart, you speak to one of the partners in the firm, and that's who handles your case, not some paralegal at a faceless corporate firm. If Patterson and Earhart can't help you, they'll refer you to someone who can. John Calvin Patterson and Wes Earhart are Ole Miss guys. They're local guys. And when you call them, you're going to get one of them on the phone the same day guaranteed. So whether you've been injured in a car wreck or have other legal issues, give them a call, 662-526-1992, or check out their website, pelaws.com. Your initial consultation is free. Warm weather is on the horizon. With it comes the inevitable debate of sock or no sock with your loafers. Save your feet and your shoes from making their own impression. Step into spring with some no-shows from dead socks that you really need to experience the difference a quality sock makes. So go to deadsoxy.com, enter the code REBELGROVE at checkout, receive 30% off all orders, including sale items. These no-shows are the same quality you already lo- uh, love and enjoy with their traditional dress socks, and they come with the no-slip guarantee. So again, go to deadsoxy.com, check out the no-show collection. Remember to enter promo code REBELGROVE at checkout for 30% off all orders. Also brought to you by Pinnacle Trust. 
Pinnacle Trust is based in Madison, Mississippi. They provide detailed, specialized investment management, financial planning, retirement planning for individuals and businesses, and much more. What they do is they build a box just for you. I've told you what that means. They sit down with you, and regardless of your level of wealth, they listen to your retirement goals, your retirement dreams. They study your expenses. They study your income. They uh, put forth a comprehensive, detailed financial and retirement plan that's just for you. It's Pintrust.com. It's really cool. You ought to check it out. P-I-N-N Trust.com. Mention you heard about Pinnacle Trust on the podcast. You'll get 10% off your first year's fee. Podcast also brought to you by Master Cuts Lawn and Landscape. 662-607-7773. Also can get the free quote by email. Emailing them at info at gomastercuts.com. Just uh, sign on a new contract. Let them take care of your yard all year long. You don't have to worry about a thing between cutting, weed eating, and edging. They handle flower beds, pine straw. They even build things for you if you so desire from custom playgrounds to fences, decks, and whatever else you would like. Again, 662-607-7773. Uh, from Decoration Day on the message board, presented a chance that Doug Nikhazy is starting on the weekend, uh, 100 at some point. He will start games on the weekend at some point this season. Barring He's going to be the Saturday right. starter. Maybe as early as next week. Yeah. That's a chance. And if he's not the Saturday starter, he's the Sunday starter because Houston Roth becomes the Saturday starter. I haven't even covered the team. I haven't seen them, and I'm telling you that. You feel good that at some point two freshmen start on the weekend together between he and Hoagland. Yeah. Yeah. It it feels like Phillips has a very critical day Saturday to keep any semblance of a job. I haven't even seen him. I just know sports and I know numbers and yes. Okay. Not arguing. Yeah, he might become a midweek guy. His numbers are better. Nikhazy. He gave up the one home run. He did. Gave, Not, up a, gave up a single and a double, or a double and a single and a home run, whatever it was. It happens. Hung a breaking ball, the textbook definition of hanging a breaking ball. Happens. And the kid hit it in the bullpen. Yeah, it happens. Yeah. But other than that, he was really effective. Seven strikeouts, one walk. And, yeah, to some Five de- innings. And, and, yes, I realize there's a, well, other than that, Mrs. Lincoln, how was the play element to that? But then, again, you have to look at the effectiveness. And what you have described to me and what I have read about him indicates that he is on his way to being a weekend starter. If he becomes a weekend starter, does Mike take his skateboard away from him? See, I'm kind of weird about this. Okay. Okay, here's my deal. He rides a skateboard all over. Yes. I would be, A, concerned that he falls and breaks his wrist. (laughs) And then you hate yourself. Now, he is really good on said skateboard. And the skateboard's probably something that is – a deal for him. Like it makes him happy. It does make him happy. I've talked to him about it. He likes it. It's probably something that he takes relaxation in. It's probably something that when he's doing it, he's not thinking about baseball. And it's his mode of transportation. And it's how he gets around. So, no, I probably don't take it away from him. I probably remind him that, hey, let's uh, hey, let's not do any of those. Let's avoid some jumps and some big heels. Yeah, let's not do the big bowl thing anytime soon. You know that soon. big hill behind Swayze? Let's not go down it with yeah. your skateboard. Let's yeah. not do that. Let's just be cool. Don't jump down any of those rails. But pitchers are different cats. Left-handed pitchers? And left-handed pitchers are nuts. And so, yeah, you got to just let them kind of be who they are. And if you're a free spirit, you got to – if I'd be afraid, seriously, I'm, I'm I'm being totally serious here. I would be afraid if I were Mike, and I said, "Hey, uh, Doug, no uh, no skateboard till the end of the season." I'd be afraid that he would like lose some sort of balance, and all of a sudden get all freaked out. I I, I need I need my pitchers to be able to leave the game away, go to the next game. It's part of the problem. Um, there is such a thing in sports as having people who care too much. They care too much. And pitchers, because, hey, look, you have a bad outing on Saturday against Auburn, and then you got to – and I, I know, I'm not on the schedule in front of me, so I'm just talking. Yeah, whatever. You play Arkansas the next week. There is such a thing in sports about losing twice in one game. I got to have a pitcher who goes, ah, yeah, you know what, they got lucky. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to go get them. I go out the next week, and when the question's asked – you know, how did you get past last week? He goes, what happened last week? Well, and I, I, I talked to Matt Wyatt about this on his show the other day because State has probably got – of the 
of the highly recruited freshmen, the high draft freshmen that came into the SEC this year, Hoagland, JT Ginn, Marceau Kidd at LSU that's already got taken out of the rotation this week for the Tigers, by the way, which he was not the worst one Hess was, but they were obsessed with their Friday night guy and leaving him in. Um, they uh, – Nikhazy has a mentality to really transition well quickly, kind of has that, that edge about him a little bit in a, in a good way. JT Ginn has that. I feel like out of all, Kumar Rocker has not shown well so far this year at Vanderbilt. Coming in as a freshman, you figure it out, but there's a certain mentality of cockiness, of just sort of edge that, that is necessary early on as you transition. And Yes, because it's different. You know, and I know they've played travel ball yeah, and man. all that stuff, and that helps. But it's different when you face a college lineup with everybody who carries one of those aluminum sticks to the plate has some semblance of an idea of what to do with it. Mm-hmm. And you can't rely on just, hey, I'm okay, all, all right. I'll just throw it by you. I'm in a little bit of trouble here, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to throw three fastballs right down the middle, about 92 miles an hour, because that kid right there, that 16-year-old kid who plays football mostly, he's not going to hit it. That doesn't exist at the SEC. Well, it's what Hogan, Hoagland is having to kind of learn is, hey, if I do that, I better duck. Yeah, because they're going to hit it yeah. hard. So, Nikhazy has shown the ability to kind of be that guy. JT Ginn's been that guy. Those those are the two of the ones I've noticed early on that have kind of pulled that away. Um, so I will say this. You'll, you'll find this interesting. Sure. Let's talk about college baseball for a minute. So, Nico Horner, the Cubs' first-round pick last year from Stanford. All right. Very, very good college player Yep, at an elite program. Um, the Cubs were thrilled with him, like fast-tracking him. And Theo Epstein, um, they, uh, much, so a lot of their emphasis right now is shifting to college players at elite programs. They think the level of play at the elite college level, which Ole Miss is part of, um, you know, we used to say, people used to say, well, it's kind of the equivalent of low A ball. No one's saying this directly, but what they're saying is, no, it's, it's, it's high A to double A. If you can excel at the elite college level and make the transition from aluminum to wood, I always you thought can high A was the best comparison. I thought double A was a touch of a stretch just because you do have lags in the lineup. Yeah. But I thought I thought high A was the appropriate level. But now they're starting to look at guys like him who play at, you know, he played at Stanford, he and did. so Stanford plays a lot of elite baseball games. Yeah, and like Ole Miss does, like LSU does, like Mississippi State does, and and uh, I, I think I think the evaluation is changing. And also, when you take a guy like Horner, a guy like Thomas Dillard after this season, you know you're getting kind of a, a more mature, finished, emotional, mental product than you did. I mean, I'm sure Thomas would tell you, I'm guessing, you know him, I don't. I'm sure he would tell you that he's more mature and and stable today than he was at 18. Staying on this baseball thing, I got another question in a second. Did I give you, did you and I talk about that Joey Votto stat that was making the rounds two days ago? I saw it. We did, did not this? talk about it. Yeah, I did see it. For anybody that hadn't seen this, and I don't know why we're picking on the Mississippi kid, but we are. Um, but Votto's incredible, man. If if Joey Votto went, think about this, O for 2,900, 2,900. That's, so O for three seasons, four seasons. Oh, no, yeah. It, so he gets yeah, 700 yeah, yeah, plate yeah, appearances. Yeah, 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 Four years without a hit. Yeah, nothing. With nothing. O for. O for. God, how frustrating would that be? His 299 OVP at that point would still be better than that of former teammate Billy Hamilton, 298. And Billy Hamilton has survived in the major leagues for a long time because he can run. He can run and he, he can he's become it. competent in other places. Yeah, he's good. He's fine. Twenty nine hundred plate appearances. We went to Cincinnati last season to see the Cubs Reds, and I'm going to tell you every time Vado hit, I was mesmerized. His swing, no joke, is absolutely perfect. So underrated because of where he is and the team he plays for. And I love what I love about Vado is I mean, he cares, but that when that at bat's over, it's over. It's filed away like a computer. He remembers it, but it's over. He does not bring it back to the plate. You can't get him out. No, it's it's incredible, it really is. Who's the DH come the third week of SEC play? I'm just going to still be platooning. Cockrell has not been good to this point of the season. They're not going to give up on him. 
Um, I think they're running the risk right now of Elko losing some at-bats, even though I still think you got to st- stick with it as bad as it's been to this point. Um, I'd like to see Fitzsimmons get a few more at-bats. And then, frankly, I don't mind – even if Servideo plays second base, I don't mind Adams being a DH to get both those guys some at-bats too. I mean, just just put your best nine sticks in there and figure it out. So the guys that have been hitting, I don't mind giving them a shot. But, no, I, I don't think there's going to be some some definite um, DH answer by the third week of SEC play. I think this is, uh, is going to be a deal where um, they keep platooning for, uh, for a little bit. From our uh, – Buddy Rebs rock on. He says to all of you, um, I haven't gotten Russell's answer, so you and I will answer this. What is one thing that happens in your life on a pretty regular basis that gives you anxiety, and how do you deal with it? Huh. Anxiety. Anxiety. What makes you anxious? Not much. I thought about it for a little while yesterday because I already had this question. I don't know if you've seen it before. Um, I mean, I get a little anxious about the girls driving. That's fair. But not bad. I mean. Well, yeah, I don't think there's anything that's going to put us in a corner, per se. Um, the one thing that does bug me, it's me speaking of people making fun of me for it, if I don't fall asleep real easy or if I wake up at like 1 a.m., I do get quite anxious because I know I'm going to wake up for good at 4.45 or 5 o'clock. I cannot sleep later than that, and I know that my night's shot. So I will I will move around, go somewhere, do something to try to put myself back to sleep because it it will freak me the heck out for a little while if I don't if I do not do it, especially two or three nights in a row where I'm like, hey, I'm tired, I've, I've got to sleep. Because I fall asleep pretty good, but I do wake up in the middle of the night a good bit. And it's not like bathroom related or anything. Just wake up. Can't help it. I don't know. I usually wake up once in the middle of the night, and I'll drink some water and go back to sleep. I take a bottle of water and put it by my bedside. That's about it. I'm not a very anxious person. I'm, uh, I used to get freaked out about all sorts of stuff, and I'm I'm pretty laid back these days. More than 10, 15 years ago? Oh, my God. More than five years ago. More than two years ago. You think so? Yeah. I don't really stress out about much. Oxonian Reb asks, 24 months from now, Ole Miss is playing their season finale in basketball. Okay. What's the program look like? Two years. Well. You'd like to have a couple questions answered, wouldn't you? <laughs> Here's question one. Can we discuss budgetary <laughs> restrictions real quick before we get into this? Uh, question one along those lines kind of is, is prompted by th- the news of yesterday. What happens to this federal probe? There are people in the college coaching business who believe, and when I say people, I mean plural, as in more than two who I've spoken to, who believe that this uh, this story is going to blow up. Uh, in the words of one coach yesterday, as the Will Wade LSU news broke by, from Yahoo, here we go. And are they right? Are they being dramatic? Because college basketball coaches can be very dramatic, like a lot of coaches, like sports writers, like a lot of people, they can be very dramatic. Um, I don't know, man. I... All right, tell me this. We're going to get back to Oxonian Reps' question in a minute because it led to this. I haven't talked to you about this at all. We talked about things yesterday, but we never got to this. Okay. Can Will Wade survive this? And don't give me the flippant answer. Can Think it through. Can Will Wade survive this? We talked about this on Greatest Pod, and I'm the only one of the three that said I don't think so. Both Gabe and Jay were like, oh, it's going to pass. I don't think it's going to pass. It's, it's a wiretap. He's been subpoenaed in a federal court. Chase, he's either going to perjure himself, which you can go to prison for that, or he's going to have to tell the truth, and the truth is on the wiretap. Take a moment to think. The question is, can he survive? Yes, that's my question. No, 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 no. No, it's not my question. Because that's that's a cop-out. Will he survive? Don't do that. Yes, he can survive because LSU can go, screw it. We don't care. Will he survive? It's a federal wiretap. Listen, you can hate Pat Forty. You can hate Pete Thamel. You can hate, who's the other, uh, 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 Wetzel. Wetzel. 
You hate those guys, love those guys, not care about those guys. They didn't make those quotes up. I know that. Pat Forty did not make those quotes up. I think LSU is going to want to keep Will Wade. <sighs> yes, he survived. Okay. So I think that those quotes, look, you and me and 99% of the people that actually have some logic in this business, so like all eight of us, um, <laughs> they... <laughs> I'm, I'm all ears. I'm fascinated. We know the score. We know what he meant. We know the situation around those statements. Yeah, they paid him $300,000 or sure. more. Or a lot more. There's he this. later came back, Jason, said that he made more money in this deal than he would have made as a rookie in the NBA. Yeah. Rookies in the NBA, boys and girls, make seven figures. There's this bullcrap bit of what actually was said, the interpretations, the intentions, the – this little bit of deniability that if LSU wants to keep him, they can finagle a way to do it. Yeah, it's crap. But by saying that he wasn't referring to money, I mean, he was—he was just—he was, just, was emotional. He was lashing out. He was having a moment. He was—he was speaking in jest. I mean, I don't know. Whatever. I mean, look, Will Wade kind of fibs this thing a little bit on the stand. I mean, it won't be the first time somebody's done that. I get what you're saying, and you're right, but, I mean, I'm I'm cynical no. here. No, and his reputation in the business is a cheater. His reputation in the business yeah. is that they, they, they he came there and just starts throwing money. There weren't a single – there wasn't a single coach in the country that had their skirt blown up yesterday because Will Wade was the guy that got caught doing this. I mean, come No, on. The, the shock level in the coaching business was on a scale of 1 to 10, About a, a ne- zero. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was a – it did not register. There were chuckles is all it was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Shocker. Yeah. No, the NCAA is going to punish TCU and Creighton, and we're going to move on with our day. And the I sad thing, the sad thing is, is that you're probably on to something. Yeah, I don't know, but no, I, I think. So to answer, unless I, LSU freaks out, I think he remains the coach. I do. I think it's crazy, but I do. So they're playing a guard. Smart's good. I said this on the on greatest part of the South. Sean Miller still coaching Arizona. Yep, yeah, there wasn't a wiretap. It was a quote. He got caught. That's, that's true. So DeAndre that, Ayton. Yeah, and he's still there. Still there. Okay. Javante Smart was not going pro after this season. He was going to play another season. Does he go pro now? Does LSU have to move him on before the NCAA comes down? Because here's the thing, guys. I'm, I'm, I don't care if everybody gets paid. In fact, I'm for everybody getting paid. But the rules are the rules. And if they're not going to amend the rules, then they have to enforce the rules. And if they're not going to amend or enforce the rules, then the message that gets sent to answer Oxonian's question is if you're Ole Miss and you're not paying big time, you're stupid. Yeah, if it's a if it's essentially a, just a free market have at it, then go for have it. At it. Have at it. I mean, don't be an idiot, but this is pretty idiotic. The head coach talking on the phone to a, a known runner. Then did he not think for one minute that hey, there's possible that this thing's being recorded? They go way back, pre-existing relationship. He said he'd never done business with him. Eh, forgot. Oh, that's the Dawkins yeah. you meant. Oh, oh yeah. I, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was Christian. asking about Mama and them. Yeah, I was. We, no, we were just talking. Joking around. Having a moment. I don't think he survives it. I don't think he's the coach at LSU next season. I love Jay, but he likes to say the good in people. Was he saying he would survive because he thinks he actually is innocent? No, he just – Jay doesn't like talking about it. For, for whatever, Jay hates any of this stuff. He, he, he doesn't just, like getting down in the grind. He doesn't like it. It's, it's a little too – Slimy for him. I think. I think he he is at covers one of those programs where some of the fans don't just don't want to talk about it, don't want to think about it. 
want to want want to view intercollegiate athletics as some form of pure amateurism, even though they know it's not. And in fairness to them, they are far from alone. Yeah. There's a lot of people that fit in that category. Yeah. Podcast brought to you in part by Scripted Jewelry. ScriptedJewelry.com. Go to the website, see all the different ways that they can help you find that perfect gift for that special someone. Personalize it with a message in your own handwriting. They've got fingerprints. They've got lots of other things to take care of you. Sizing guides, turnaround times that are great. Plenty of ways to make it easy. They also will show you what was recently purchased. They've got a lookbook. So many different options, and they'll save you money in the process. Rebels 10, R-E-B-E-L-S-1-0. To save 10% with scriptedjewelry.com. Podcast also brought to you by the Weston Jackson. If you're suffering from some anxiety, uh, head to the Weston Jackson and visit Soul Spa. Soul, and, and you can uh, restore serenity to your anxious soul. It's the ultimate luxury spa experience in downtown Jackson. Indulge in personalized massages, signature facials, soothing body treatments, and much more on their extensive spa list. And then go uh, head over to Estelle Wine Bar and Bistro. And now that you're good and relaxed, have a creative craft cocktail or uh, enjoy their curated wine list. It's open for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and Sunday brunch. Chef Caden's mission is to connect guests with the community through local partnerships. Uh, Estelle's fantastic, man. The food's great. You'll love it. Um, so check it out tonight. Podcast also brought to you by John Edwards of Regency Travel Incorporated in Memphis. You've been thinking about that golf trip with the guys or uh, an anniversary trip? Maybe she'll ne- the one she'll never forget. Get in touch with John. He's part of Virtuoso. It's a worldwide network of travel partners. Allows him to supply his clients with added values and unique benefits that are simply not available to other travelers. Um, John really knows his stuff. He traveled the globe for 37 years. He knows all the ins and outs of travel. What you do is you call him. You give him some parameters. You give him a budget. He'll give you options you would not find on your own. He'll make your trip one that is uh, really special and uh, create a lifetime of unique memories. 901-494-3387 or send him an email, Edwards at regencytravel.net. First-time clients save $50 off the first booked trip just by telling John you heard about Regency Travel on the podcast. It's a podcast that is also brought to you by Grenada Nissan. If you're in the market for a Nissan vehicle, Grenada Nissan's the place to go. They have a complete selection of new and previously owned Nissan vehicles. Go in. Test drive one today. Tell Gene and Sandy and the people there at Grenada Nissan that you heard about Grenada Nissan on the podcast or at rebelgrove.com, and you'll get Rebel Savings on top of the already great deals at Grenada Nissan. It's grenadanissanusa.com. Podcast is brought to you by Blow Dry Bar Oxford, 662-638-3310. You can shoot them an email if you have questions at theblowdrybar at gmail.com, 1801 Jackson Avenue. They're open 10 to 3 tomorrow. On Saturday, if it's raining, if you can't get to a baseball game, send a, send the lady in your life over here. If you're a female listening, head on over. Mention RebelGrove.com. Get a gift certificate for an upcoming occasion. You get a discount on that from the ever popular blowout to many other uh, hair things that you can do from keratin treatments and more makeup applications. They even uh, do uh, plenty other deals too for you there at Blow Dry Bar Oxford again six six two. 638-3310, voted Best New Business in Oxford for 2018. Uh, back to our questions. Best case, worst case for football next season, I think worst case is two. I think best Oof. case is seven. Is that fair? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you look, you can make the argument they could lose every coin flip game, but yeah. New Mexico State and Southern, Southeastern Louisiana. That's fair. The, the absolute worst case. Yeah, right. Is, I don't, is it happening? No, but yeah. it's absolute case. worst case is two and ten. Best case, it's seven or eight. Best case is they go four and zero oh in the non league. That's correct. They beat Vanderbilt Ar- and Arkansas. They beat Arkansas, Vanderbilt. Who else is on the schedule? Well, I mean, like, you, they're not beating Alabama. Realistically, no. they're not beating Auburn. Realistically, they're not beating A and M. And LSU would be very and LSU would be very difficult pull. And then states so the other game, state. and that's a game that is so weird. That, and and I, I think states can take a step back. Um, oh, and Missouri, and Missouri, and that'd be a tough game too. So best case, best case is eight wins, eight and four. Worst case is two wins. Meet in the middle, five six, five or six wins. 
And if you made me bet on a range, I'd bet on five or six. Yeah, that's fair. I have never played a Grand Bear Golf Course, so I have no uh, no tips. I'm sorry, I've not been down there. I've played um, it. Be careful with the lake on 12. It's just it's a mess, and, and okay. you, you, you be careful. I want to get down there and play all those courses in that area, but I've just never done it. Um, Where is that? It's Biloxi, the, oh. the area down there. I'll go. I'll, I'll drive Bear. your cart and drink beer. Will you? Yeah, all day long. All day. Um, your your question from uh, him is: uh, If you were the Grizzlies GM, what are you doing in the draft in nineteen? Hmm. Where am I drafting? Uh, you tell me. I don't know. I think the Grizzlies are hoping to convey the pick and, and move on and 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 start fresh. If they're picking in the five six range. It's a good draft, uh, you know. Cam Reddish, John Morant. If I'm the Grizzlies, I'm desperately trying to win enough to, games to convey. I don't want to pick sixth or seventh. I, I want I want to unload that pick, to be done with it, have that debt cleared, and and get restarted. But if I have to pick there, I, I'm. Taking an impact wing. Okay. Over under five years before the NCAA is only in charge of bas- basket weaving tournaments at retirement villages in Indiana. Over, 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 over. over. They keep winning court cases. I am fascinated on this Wade thing, man. They're in a weird spot here. They don't want to do this. They don't want to do LSU is a Final Four caliber team. LSU's probably a three seed in the tournament today, maybe a two. Do they really want to dig into LSU right now? Do they really want to dig into this? I know they're going to hide behind, we can't be involved in an ongoing court thingy. Will Wade's going to be asked about this at the SEC tournament, at the NCAA tournament. It's going to be an incessant storyline. Although the NCAA tournament likes to do sort of like the Masters does. They'll try to shut your ass down if that's what you're digging on. 100%. Yeah. Our tournament. Our storyline. Our they, narrative. And they have some reporters who play we'll along. Push it. Absolutely will march in lockstep so that they can meet in Indianapolis and do a mock tournament and – have some St. Elmo's shrimp cocktail and, and, and rave about the warriors that the NCAA are. Those people exist. What makes the Indiana shrimp cocktail better than other shrimp cocktail? I don't, I've, I've never had it. and I, I, I'm, I'm so freaking fascinated by it that I because swear. Because every good steakhouse in America has shrimp cocktail. What makes Indiana shrimp cocktail they so. do that deal with it. All right, well, let's look it up. Yeah, I mean, I know what you mean. It's, it's got the thing on top of it or whatever. That's not answering my question still, though. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm doing the very best because I can. Because the way they put their cocktail sauce on it is not an answer. Because that's what you're telling me. They Do they heat it up? Do they? St. Elmo Shrimp Cocktail. Here we go. Yeah, what's so, what, what is so let's, special? Let's find out what it's all about. It's fifteen ninety five. Yeah. For four shrimp served with spicy cocktail sauce. Four shrimp. Yep, yep. Well, that's not what I want. You can buy their cocktail sauce if you'd like. Yeah. It's nine dollars. Huh. I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm looking. Let's see if I can find a photo of it. Maybe I can explain. Why yeah, I'm kind of just hang with us. People. They've got it on top. Of it, like uh, your traditional shrimp cocktail, you take the shrimp and you dip it. This appears to have it smothered all over. Yeah, it, it. is. I saw Cat Terrell's picture on her, her Twitter account. I mean, I'll look for it in a minute. It's it looks good, but it's a shrimp cocktail. Yeah, I don't understand. Well, maybe we need to make that a road trip. Just go get go to St. Elmo's. Go to Indianapolis and go to St. Elmo's and check it out. Invite NCAA Emily to go with us. Oh, that would be awesome. I'd love it if she would come. We could catch up on old times. Really? Yeah. 
Yeah, here, yeah. I mean, this is from her. It's just in a thing. It's just got. It's just got sauce on it. Yeah, that's what I was looking at. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. Maybe the sauce is just fantastic. No, I I do like a ton of horseradish in my cocktail sauce. Yeah, I like it spicy. I, I, I mean, pile it up. Yeah, as, as hot as you want to make it. Yeah. Here's a. I found where they do a uh, shrimp cocktail competitive eating competition. Okay. Uh, this would have been the winner in. Let me find it. I think I could do pretty well in that category. I do too, honestly. It's one of the things I always said. If you told me I had to do competitive eating, I think tacos would be number one. Ooh. Yeah, I think tacos would be my number one, especially on a just hey, if you've got time, how many could you eat? I could make myself sick. I could eat a lot. Yeah. I love a good taco. Um, I love a bad taco. <laughs> So, you win two thousand dollars if okay. you uh, won this. Uh, Joey Chestnut won it the year that I'm the year before. I'm looking at the press release here. Eight minutes. How much shrimp in uh, weight do you think he ate? Eight minutes. He had eight minutes. Come on, a dude that eats like eighty talk. I mean, eighty hot dogs in twelve minutes. Twelve pounds. You're you're high. That would have won. Um, he won. He ate nine point two pounds in eight minutes. Wow. Yeah, nine point two. How much do you think you could eat in eight minutes? That constituted 105 shrimp. 105 shrimp in eight minutes, 9.2 pounds. I do think I could eat. They're a little chewy, so I wonder a w- little bit about how you get them down as much as anything. I think in eight minutes I could eat 30 to 40 shrimp. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel good about that. Because couldn't you eat them two at a time, too? Yeah. You can do two at a time. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to see the whole list. Like, could I not finish last in this thing? What's my list? I want to see the full results. Yeah, I know people out there are like, let's do this. No, I don't know. Let's not. <sighs> Be expensive. Uh, I think so. So somebody would donate. Hey, Mike. Might donate. Get a free meal out of it. What's your favorite? If you could only have, because I know you like shrimp a lot. I do. If you could only have one preparation of shrimp for the rest of your life, what would it be? Boiled, fried, sautéed. Okay, look. My favorite shrimp preparation, just in general, is barbecue. New Orleans-style barbecue shrimp. Yeah. It's my favorite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Like in the, the redu- reduced sauce, the spicy, that that's my deal. Yeah. But if you told me I could only have – that still might be the answer because you can turn that into po' boys and sandwiches and so many different things with it. Yeah. But I have a – fondness for just straight up pill and eat on with cocktail sauce I do too. that might be number two and it would be just because it's so much more everyday oriented that would be really close to be my answer but i think i would still stick with the barbecue shrimp in mobile they do a lot of the steamed shrimp it's good and it's good it's good it's really good the reds look there's nothing bad no no no, bad. no no i mean no, if you'd like to grill it and wrap it in bacon i'm not going to kick it out of bed oh god no it's all right that's like people say do you want uh you want shrimp creole or do you want shrimp etouffee yes. and i'm like yeah sure which one do you got? <laughs> I'm good. My mom does that like Christmas Eve. You know, we will have shrimp stuff, and she's like, which, "Which do you want?" I'm just like, "Yeah." There was a place, a, whichever one. There you was kind do. of a gourmet market in Oxford. There might still be one, if so, I'm not aware of it. Back in the day, ten, twelve years ago, whatever, um, that would do steamed shrimp in front of you, and you could put the oh, spices on it. You could do Old Bay or whatever you wanted on it at the time. They would steam it, take about ten minutes. Yeah, they're not here anymore. They are not. And they're here missed. Anymore. Yeah, they were good. They were good. It was really, really good. Um, all right, let's see. Um, what is that? Oh, that's your washing machine. Speaking of, uh, all right. Here's a question. I'll take it if you don't want to. Do you think Bjork is still actively looking to get out? No. I think there's a sense of normalcy at one point. At some point in this, I mean, like him or hate him, Ross. Had a lot of crap going on where you never is. I mean, it, look, it's a bad, it's a good analogy and a bad analogy because of the scope of the one I'm, I'm I'm talking about. But it's not like George W.'s presidential campaign. You don't really know what Ross's tenure was going to look like because of the NCAA stuff that popped up. Um, you're just now kind of sort of seeing that. I think that if he was trying to bail, 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 you wouldn't have seen some of the effort that's been put into the town hall meetings and the different things that have gone on here recently. And frankly. I mean, I don't know what a new chancellor is going to do. None of us do because we can't name the new chancellor. But otherwise, there appear, there appears to be some sense of normalcy around things currently. Who would you bet on for the chancellor right now? I have no idea. Um, 
I think a politician is going to be a front runner in this of some type. I've heard multiple names. I don't know which one of those politicians yeah. are the front runner. Um, and if I th- you made me pick someone today, and I would not put any money on this, the name that I would give you, if I if you said you have to give a name, I'd say Chip Pickering. I've. I, I would have done that a month ago. I wouldn't have done that today. Okay. Um, I, I, I don't feel as confident about that today for a couple different reasons, and I'm not getting into on the show. Um, I do still think Robbins becomes a prominent candidate before it's over. Um, I've heard some positives in that camp in the last few weeks. I anticipate, and this is the wrong word, but I'm having a hard time finding a replacement word, so I'm using this in quotation marks. Sure. I anticipate a battle of some sorts. Involved in this, I don't think this is. There going are to be. multiple sects that are going to uh, yes. use whatever uh, capital they have in this race. Yes, no doubt. Yes, agreed. Yeah. Um, all right, I don't know why we're going to answer this one. We are anyway. Coming from Nola Lawyer, he said it's a fun question. He asked his interns. Okay. If he decided overnight to go become a criminal, and we're going to be convicted of a crime, would you want it? To, what would you want it to be? Murder, money, money laundering, mortgage fraud, tax evasion, robbery, etc. Well, I'd want it to be a white collar crime. That's where I'm going with this. Something that's going to put me in one of those country club prisons whenever I do get caught. Yeah, and maybe something where I could have stocked some money overseas in Switzerland or something in the process too. While we're at it, yeah, it would be some sort of financial deal. Oh, yeah, where yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, yeah, like yeah. I'm, you know. Now you sometimes you get popped for those for. Years and years and years, but but I don't want to go to a prison where it's like, okay, now which gang do you belong to? <laughs> oh, thanks. Or it's okay. Now go ahead, pick your boyfriend. I don't want that. You want to go to one where it's like, hey, what's your stock tip for the for the morning? Yeah, we're, we're gonna le- we're gonna play some cards. Yeah, we're gonna you know, who's gonna win the big ping pong tournament this yeah. this month? I mean, I don't want to go to prison. I'd I'd rather not. But if I have to go, give me the minimal security club med sort of prison. Yeah, on a short term. Yeah, like a week. Like a week. Yeah. <laughs> Time served. Thank you. Yeah. All right, good. Good. Oh, gosh. Uh, That's why if you ever hear, listen, out there, if you ever hear that I'm committing cr- crimes, come to my defense because I'm not committing crimes. I'm I'm pretty much a rule follower when it comes to stuff like that. I I, I I pay my accountant pretty good money. I want to make sure there's no tax screw up. I no thanks. I mentioned that there never been I never seen a live no hitter past the high school level. So my question to both of you would have to be: What's the coolest sporting feat that you have seen live? So Bo Jackson hit a home run off Nolan Ryan. That's good. It was pretty majestic. Um, game three of the World Series. Uh, Nondescript game, though, right? It was a good game, well pitched game. Okay. Um, trying to think. I, I, I'm trying to think if I've seen anything at the pro level that would stick out and go, "Hey, this was phenomenal that day." Um, I saw a Thunder Miami Heat game in uh, Oklahoma City. Where Durant, Wade, LeBron, Bosch, Westbrook, and Harden all went for more than 20. And it was when the game ended, and I heard other people saying this as it ended, um, that was the most beautiful game I've ever seen. It was phenomenal. Like, I walked out of there going, I might never see another performance like that again where you saw what's now turned out to be, did Dwayne Wade ever win an MVP? I don't know. So I saw at least four MVPs playing at a high level. When the majority of my life, my pro sports career had to do with uh, our career, um, fandom had to do watching the Saints lose football games. There's not a lot of options there. I've seen Brees throw for 400 yards in person. Um. Yeah. I. This will hurt you. I don't remember it. Um. Might have even been depending on where it was. You might be interested. This might have been the first one I've seen. Greg Maddox throw a one hitter against the Cubs. One or two hitter against the Cubs when I was young. 
I don't recall much about it, I but I do recall I don't that. remember Greg Maddox pitching anywhere besides Chicago. Yeah, exactly. Right. So I've seen that, but I don't recall it. I just know I was at that game. Um, but, yeah. It was just a dream. Just a dream. Didn't happen. Nope. Uh, at the college level, I mean, Dexter's 300 yards rushing against Tennessee was pretty incredible. It um, was. It was. 272, I think. Was the it, was it was one whatever. of the – an unforgettable performance. I mean, as Jeffrey said, Pomeranz on two days rest, throwing 116 pitches is pretty impressive. Yeah. From a pure impressive feat standpoint. I, I was at the Gerald Glass uh, – Chris Jackson. Chris Jackson game. game. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's good. I mean – whether you were for Ole Miss or LSU that night, you walked out of that building going, that, that's one we'll be talking about. They were both awesome that night. Couldn't stop them. That full game is on YouTube. You can go back and watch the whole thing with or without the commercials. You can even go sit with the commercials for a lot of the time. Yeah. Yeah. I've gotten down that, that wormhole before. It was a great game. They both just were fantastic. That was a fun night. I don't know. There's a bunch. I was at the uh, tornado game when uh, at the SEC tournament, Alabama and Mississippi State. You get desensitized by it a little bit covering it because you don't necessarily recognize it always when it's happening. It takes a minute sometimes. So yeah, I, you see so many games. Yeah. And it's, games are different when you're covering a game. Podcast brought to you in part by GNM Pharmacy and Tyson Drug, 662-236-2222. You know, to transfer your medications, it's simple. You just give them a call and tell them. You don't have to stay with the uh, the big chains. Go to a local pharmacy that delivers locally to home or workplace. They've got MedSync to make sure you are on schedule throughout the month with your medication. I've been telling you about CBD oil. So tons of different options with GNM there in Oxford on South Lamar. Again, 662-236-2222. Um, LB's Meat Market is a, not, they're not a regular uh, advertiser on the Oxford Exxon podcast. They are on the Beer Garden. But I'm going to tell you about this because uh, Greg Jones is is been a great friend of ours, and they have a new sausage out, Chase. Ooh, it's okay. a lamb sausage. I'm listening. Uh, they have a spicy version and then a less spicy version. Sure. Um, I've had both. They're both exceptional. Um, I prefer the spicy because I just like spicy generally but uh they're both great you should go in try it at lb's it's right across from kroger 2008 university avenue in oxford 662-259-2999 it's the uh freshest cuts in oxford the bone-in ribeye is fantastic so um you're coming up for the weekend and uh maybe you're hanging out at your condo or or uh whatever uh stop by lb's grab a six-pack from their uh their beer fridge Tell Greg that you heard about it on uh, the Beer Garden or on the Oxford Exxon podcast. We would appreciate that, and uh, I know that Greg would too. Our podcast is also brought to you by Harry Alexander. Starting next week, I'm going to be telling you about a new development in Oxford. If you're thinking about relocating to Oxford, if you're thinking about uh, making Oxford your uh, getting a second home or making it your retirement home, uh, a new development in Oxford that's about seven-tenths of a mile from the square. Uh, it's fantastic. It's uh, affordable. I saw the uh, model home yesterday, so we'll talk about that starting next week. Harry's an Oxford-based REMAX legacy realty agent. He's been in Oxford more than four decades. No one knows the residential and condo market in Oxford better than Harry. Go to his site. He'll prove it to you. It's harryalexander.com. Click on the Properties and Neighborhoods tab. Filter through by what you're looking for, then send him an email. It's H-A at HarryAlexander.com. Podcast also brought to you by Oxford University Bank, OUB, locally owned and operated right here in Oxford. When you deposit money at OUB, that money and the vast majority of the bank's profits go right back into the Oxford community. OUB gives you the comfort of home, all the benefits the big mega banks provide, all the technology and products you can want, all with the personal touch. And when you call OUB, you don't have to wait, uh, five-minute wait, no 10 buttons to push. You uh, speak directly with someone there at OUB. They offer Casasa. It's the absolute best cash checking account. And they have a uh, commercial checking account that's now paying 1% interest as long as you keep $10,000 in the account. And it comes with fully interactive online banking. To learn more, live Oxford, bankoxford.com or call 662-234-6668. OUB is FDIC insured. And one final reminder here, if you're staying in Oxford during spring break, and uh, you need help watching 
your uh, child, the Oxford Park Commission can help. They have their annual spring break day camp starting next week. Cost is $75 per child. It's open for ages 5 to 13. The drop-off is at 7.30. The pickup is at 5.30. Registration can be completed at OxfordParkCommission.com. The deadline to sign up is Friday today at 5 p.m. Oh, my buddy throwing this question on me in the Fire Away Friday today, so we'll uh, get to it because I'll just have to hear about it later. If I don't answer it, it says, uh, man in the high castle style. Mike takes the LSU job after the 06 season when it was offered after Small School Vols far- firing. Ole Miss obviously promotes Dan McDonald. Ooh. What do the two programs look like over the years? Where are they today, and how are things different in both places? No habla inglés. <laughs> um, okay, let's do it. Okay. And I've and I've got what I truly think, and I kind of had an answer to be funny too. Um, Mike would have wanted LSU. Um, there would have been intense pressure at LSU. You got to think about LSU in 2006. They're coming off of all thing where they again kind of hired a favorite son. Yeah, you've got Skip Bertman still around. Um, yeah, I think Mike goes to Omaha. Might win a title. Um, has a lot of success there. I think once Skip's done, Joe Oliva takes over. I do think Mike's fired at some point at LSU just because of – it's just hard at your home place like that. You, the expectations are so high. And at that point, Smoke Laval had been to Omaha twice in four years and gotten fired. And, again, it was more to it. But point being, on there the field There was some off-the-field stuff that Mike would not have battled. No, 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 absolutely not. He run, run a program as well as any human in the world from that standpoint. Yeah. Um, but I do think there probably would have been at some point a – splice point where they said let's kind of move away from the Bertman era if you will um okay. at LSU okay and maybe that's just Mike going somewhere else I don't know but either way I don't think he coaches there for 15 years too and it's this whole deal I just okay don't. all right um here's the thing with Dan McDonald Dan kind of learning this from Mike frankly because Mike did turn down LSU in 2006 pretty loyal guy I think Dan McDonald's the coach at 06 at Ole Miss I think Dan McDonald's the coach today at Ole Miss um I don't think he leaves. Is the program different? Look, is the program different? As in day-to-day operations, annual success from a falling off the table standpoint, that thing's no, it's very, very similar. They're still going to win a lot of regular season games. Is the postseason success different? I mean, it's very possible. I mean, I don't know. I mean, Dan – you know, a lot of people talk about, oh, Mike makes them too tight. Well, I mean, Dan's not exactly some free free will kind of dude here. Dan's I mean, not he's, taking his skateboard to the, no, to the park. No, no, he's an edgy dude. I mean, he, you know, his teams are his teams are built around attitude, around edge, around kind of a greediness, if you will. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I think Mike allows – I think Mike in some ways and Carl and, and Mike Clement – I think they recruit sometimes just, hey, get the talent in here, then we'll figure out the personalities, which, okay, fine, well enough. I think at Louisville sometimes Dan almost kind of looks at the grittiness as a first-tier thing a little bit. I mean, I feel like there's more cohesiveness in their attitude year to year over with Dan. Um, I, here's what I would find interesting a little bit. And I don't know the answer to this, and this is where it gets interesting because I can easily do the cop-out to go, hey, yeah, they'd both be at the same places, and it's kumbaya at LSU and Ole Miss, both McDonald and Bianco flip. 2012-13, whenever it was, they hired an assistant. I don't think they would have. I think if Dan McDonald had been at Ole Miss, I think South Carolina potentially hires Dan McDonald to replace Ray Tanner in 2013. Interesting. He's from South Carolina. He would put not from there, but he played at the Citadel. Yeah, from the area. Ray Tanner was his number one reference for Mike Bianco in two thousand one when he hired Dan from wherever he was, maybe in the Citadel too. Actually, I think it would have been very hard. He might not have done it, but I think there would have been a chance in an alternate world that Dan McDonald's the head coach at South Carolina today had he taken the Ole Miss job. In at six. which point, and I know now we're officially down the wormhole. <laughs> who who would Ole Miss have hired to replace Dan McDonald in twenty thirteen? Well, frankly, they looked hard at Chad Holbrook, who got the Carolina job at the time. Yeah. Um. I mean, I'm we're playing games at this point. Who knows? Um. You know. Uh. Monty Lee would have been a thought. You could have. I don't know. Yeah. I, I'm, we're wormholing so much at this point that who knows. But. 
It's an interesting question because my, my, my question of the whole thing is not what Bianco would do at LSU. I mean, he had a ton of resources. He'd known everybody down there. He'd been fine, at least for a little while. Is would Dan have stuck here and let this be his program too, the way that he has seen Mike do here and the way that he has done at Louisville where he has turned down every job in the dang country to stay at Louisville and make a lot of money in, at Louisville. Now, them moving to the ACC helped that a ton. But nonetheless, I mean, he – he does not budge. He is Louisville's head baseball coach. And an administration that is chaotic almost annually. That's the one thing I've wondered with him is not with Ole Miss related, just in general. Does the, does the administration stuff start to get to a place where he goes, all right, it's been a ride. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to head out. Well, because you have to worry about what, what, what the worry for Dan McDonald is, is Louisville bringing an administration at some point that goes, hang on, we have no attendance that we pay for from a premium seating standpoint, and we're spending what on baseball? Right. We're doing what? Makes no sense. Yeah, financially, help me here. That's what you worry about. Yeah. So And suddenly basketball. Because he's making a million dollars a year. He's and one suddenly basketball's not as financially, yeah, 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 yeah. you know, solid. Because Louisville is a very wealthy athletic program. But Mike's making a million dollars a year. How much of the Louisville money was Papa John's money? I don't know. But, I mean, I just mean annual revenue yeah. like anything else. Sure. I mean, because basketball makes so much. And football now is in a power conference that makes good money. Yeah. I mean, they're like a top five, six athletic program from a financial standpoint. Very sneaky, sneaky rich. Um, Staying with questions that I don't have much use for at the moment. Um, If the baseball team doesn't do well in SEC play, doesn't get out of a regional, is there a chance almost makes a change? For what it's worth, I like Mike a lot. I'm just curious. I don't think Mike Bianco will be fired at the end of the season, no matter what. Um, I do think there's well, a hot seat, though, because it is a failure if you don't go past a regional with this group that you recruited in 2016. I'm going to be mean to you here. Go ahead. I don't think it's going to happen. You know more about it than I do. So, if the answer is that's not going to happen, then fair enough. They go 12-18 and 18 in the league, and they don't make the tournament. In my head, no matter what happens, I feel like there's one more year at least. Okay. I just do. Um, now, I don't think they will go 12-18. and 18. That would be Mike's worst season that he's had at Ole Miss throughout his career. Yeah, that's why I threw the number out. Um, I mean, now look, he told me something went all to hell in a handbag, and they went 15-15, and 14-16. I mean, in this division, I'm not going to call you crazy. Stuff happens. 12-18 um, and 18 Yeah, you go to Fayetteville and play well and get swept. Yeah, I mean – that's what I was talking about in the mailbag. It's, it's not even about the teams. It's about that every team has got a really good ace right now, and you just keep losing on Friday night if you did it. And, you know, their problems are Saturday and Sunday in the rotation. So if Etheridge goes 5-5, five and five, per se, let's okay. say he's an average, which is still really, really freaking good, okay. SEC Friday night arms, okay. well, that's putting a lot of pressure on you to keep piling up wins on the back half to get above 500 in the league. I mean, just it's math. So – I don't know. I mean, yeah, I can paint out a lot of different pictures, but that and is before a anybody goes, I'm being anti Ole Miss. LSU could come to Oxford and play well for a weekend and get swept. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's just the league's nuts, man. Frankly, I mean, LSU right now might be the worst team in the West today. That's what I mean. I mean, it's just today they might be the worst team in the SEC West. It's can- other than Alabama. It's a cannibalistic division. Yeah, you could lose anywhere. You could go play Auburn and 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 play. It's well why those first two weekends are so freaking critical. Got to win five. Is games. to beat Alabama, beat Missouri, beat the bad teams, and then also get some confidence for the yeah. Oaklands and the Phillips and the Caseys and those dudes. I'll say it. I think they got to go five and one. Uh, here we go. I like this one. I'm not going to make you do it, but I do find this uh, question interesting. If you want to go down to uh, the board at rebelgrove.com and find this, you can. Here's the full roster from the 1989 Cleveland Indians from the movie Major League. Can you read three names and recite the famous line, who are these effing guys? I'm not going to make you do that. But I will say, they did a phenomenal job of coming up with fake names that sound like baseball names on this yeah. roster. It is great. All Will, the way Willie Mays Hayes. Mario Crespi. Sure. Why not? <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Pepper Leach was a coach. Why not? Yeah, it sounds oh, like good. a coach, yeah. Seth Lindbergh. Um, <laughs> Matt Kuntz. Why not? I mean, the the one that they cheated here, because obviously he threw a perfect game in the World Series, they've got a Donnie Larson on the team. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. That's good. It's all good. Um, I do find this funny. So, you, I don't know if you know this or not. When 
Vaughn comes in. I, I got I got caught up. And we might even go over these Monday. Just remind me, and I'll actually go through a lot of them because everybody's seen this movie. Everybody likes this movie, and we don't have time at the moment. Is I went through all the trivia for this movie and all the little Easter eggs and different things. There was some really cool stuff in this movie where they blended history, who some of the teams are modeled after, and different things. Because um, the whole storyline came from when the twins almost moved to Florida in the 70s because the attendance dropped below the number necessary to move them. It was a very similar situation to uh, to the Indians from the movie. But the uh, when Vaughn walks off the mound after he strikes out the guy and he's getting celebrated and whatever, the first guy to greet him in the dugout, you see the back of his jersey. And on here, his uh, name is a starting pitcher named Jeremy Keltner. Keltner was the Indians infielder that ended Joe DiMaggio's hit streak back in the day. Wow. They used the guy's same last name. That's incredible. Yeah, he was the infielder that broke DiMaggio's 56-game streak. So a lot of different stuff in the Major League movie. We'll go over that some Stuff that those guys did to entertain themselves. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah all yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. I mean, almost every player was kind of modeled after somebody else and, and different things. A lot of really, really cool stuff in here. I mean, there there, there really is. There's There's a ton. Uh, I'm gonna find one more here that I found interesting. While you while you find there. it, let me yeah. tell you a reminder: the Ole Miss women's tennis team returns home. They face Mississippi State on Sunday at 1 p.m. Admission is free. For more information, visit OleMissSports.com. So um, here was the last one. I'm just curious if you know the uh, if you know the answers to this. And this is where we'll we'll stop. Um, and I may have skipped over some. Sorry, we're just out of time. Name three current or name the three current SEC basketball head coaches who made the NCAA tournament in their first year at their current job. I know the answer. Do you really? I had to look it up, but right. I did look it up for us to find the answer, yeah. John, I would have gotten two of the three correct. John Calipari. That is correct. Um Mike White. That is incorrect. He okay. went to the NIT in year one. Okay. That would have been my wrong guess, by the way. Okay. Mike Anderson? That is incorrect. Damn. Um, <laughs> it's a good question. It's a good question. Great question. Because the other two kind of got in skin of the teeth, but they were in. Frank Martin? That is incorrect. He, frankly, has had a pretty crappy career at South Carolina other than the uh, Final yeah. Four. I, I looked at his record year over year and kind of got a little squeamish. Bryce Drew, Billy Kennedy? Bryce Drew is correct. Okay. Vanderbilt got in. Billy Kennedy is incorrect. Yeah. Felt incorrect. Um, Jeez. I was going through the league. I'll give you head. one more guess before I tell you. Okay. So it's Calipari and Drew and – Correct. Um, I can almost feel people screaming at me. Avery Johnson? Incorrect. Kunzo okay. Martin. No shit. I mean, really? Yeah. How Bryce about? Drew and Kunzo Martin in the same category with the one Jonathan Calipari. <laughs> so, Jonathan Vincent Calipari for a full name. Man, Ole Miss needs to win a, win a game tomorrow night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They really do. I, I can't tell you how many times I've thought it to myself. For so many reasons. Well, obviously, Red Cap baseball, basketball, and the like on Monday. We'll go over some Major League trivia and much more. So, appreciate you all week long and today going through uh, this random show. So, uh, you check the beer garden for tons of uh, combine stuff. Plenty more on the site. Again, talk to you Monday.